and there's Venison Sharks, it's Vegas here, hope you're doing well, and I want to give you the world. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my patrons for making today's video possible. More on that later. Resorts World was one of the most anticipated hotels in Las Vegas history, and the first new property built on the Las Vegas Strip from the ground up in over a decade. With 10 years of anticipation, planning, effort, and billions of dollars placed on the site, it's a wonder if Resorts World can live up to the hype. Well, now it's time to pop inside, have a look around, and see if Resorts World Las Vegas is really a property worth staying at. All right, Spinners and Sharks, so here we are. We're officially in Resorts World Las Vegas, or at least we're in a third of it. Now, this hotel is massive. It's so large, it can actually fit a three-story shopping complex on the inside. So we are actually gonna be traversing the entire property best we can and the most concise method possible and we're gonna try and see if we can see the best of Resorts World Las Vegas and see what they have to offer. So one benefit to Resorts World is that it is open, not just physically open as in, hey, I'm glad it's not Echelon Place anymore where it was just gonna be a gigantic parking lot, but it's actually open. So we get a good idea. Uh, it, it, it's amazing to see a new modern property that's just got some good sensibilities everywhere. So you got the yellow tail, or excuse me, the red tail restaurant next door over here. So there's that sign of Asian theming there. There's also going to be a new Mulberry Pizzeria space over here. I'm not sure if Beverly Hills is what I want as far as the pizzeria goes, but hey, you know what? If people are into it, people are into it. And then we have the big Resorts World Sphere up front over here. Not, uh, not the Madison Square Garden Sphere by any means, but it's an interesting little feature. Probably the prettiest thing I've seen in, uh, in this property here. It is just gorgeous. Man. I feel like I should be, uh, I feel like I should be commenting a little bit more, but this place really is breathtaking. There's a good vegan option over there at Craig's. I believe it actually is vegan ice cream. So that's pretty impressive. Gonna have to take Wonder Woman down here and see if it's actually good. We might do a quick review on that. Now, gotta admit, not familiar with a lot of these restaurants here on the property. It's my very first time staying here, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of research on the back end to be able to supply you guys with some interesting facts and details. Off to the left of this casino. We'll be popping in there pretty soon. And immediately to the left is the Gatsby's Cocktail Lounge. They have this completely nutty little cocktail in there. It's called a champagne bubble bath. Had one of those. I'll see if I can cut in a little footage of that. But basically what the champagne bubble bath is, they take a whole bunch of champagne and a whole bunch of other liquors. They put it in a bathtub and they serve it to you with rubber ducks. I still have the rubber ducks. It's actually pretty impressive. This is pretty much where the mall ends over here. You can go upstairs, and they have a few more things. I think it's the Barza Zoo. 
and a few other things, but I don't think it's going to be open yet. Restrooms are back this way. And then out this way, you can kind of walk through the hotels. Light changes a lot here. There's also an interesting thing I did notice. There are a lot of outlets in this property, not just in your rooms, but in general, there are a lot of outlets. It's a very modern sort of thing. They're very aware of the usage of electronic devices. And then, um, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty liberal about it, which is interesting for Vegas, but I think it makes sense coming from an Asian company. I've already been walking for five minutes and I haven't even covered a third of this property. Usually by now we've got a good amount of the casino taken care of, but yeah, now they have this whole mall here. In fact, I think we should take a quick glance at the upper level of the mall. I'll break this up a little bit. This is gonna be where the conference center is. Here we go. So more of the kind of mall area. Again, this is the not so soft opened version of it. So it's not perfect and it's not done yet. To get down to the Vegas loop though, if that's something that you guys are interested in, we might try that later to get down the strip. A lot of open space here. It's a little unusual for a Vegas hotel and slash or casino, I have to admit. But here are the conference rooms, and they've got a number of them already. We'll take a little wander down this way, but you can also find the spa in the fitness center here. Yeah, it's actually pretty intense. I've never been to a property this grandiose, I don't think. Not this clean and new and grandiose, anyway. But yeah, let's get down to the spa area. We'll turn right back around and check out a few more things. Wow, there's just so much space here. It's clear that this was four and a half billion dollars. Also, here's a neat little feature. So a lot of the spots have this little wireless logo here. Doesn't mean that you get Wi-Fi. It does mean, however, that if your device supports it, you can actually, let me see if I can get it to work. Ah, oh, darn it, it's not working. Usually it means you can just charge your phone by placing it there, but I don't seem to be, oh, there it is. Yep, got it to go. Yeah, you can actually charge your phone wirelessly on these little spots over here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but a neat little feature. Back to the tour. But yeah, moving on. We're back by the Lotus Rooms here. You still get a good amount of Southeast Asian theming in here. You can tell by a lot of the naming conventions and a lot of the restaurants there. It was definitely catering towards a largely Asian clientele, which is cool, which is cool. That's what Lucky Dragon was doing. But unlike Lucky Dragon, they seem to be fine with everybody joining in the fun over here, and they've just kind of made it generally modern, which is pretty impressive. But there is the FedEx office, just general direction. You can also get back down to the Hilton, so that's pretty handy there. place is pretty awesome though, gotta admit. You can also take an escalator right back down to the gaming floor. Everything is built around the casino, but I mean physically in a three-dimensional space built around the casino. And look at all these places to sit and hang out and wait. It's rather impressive. It's actually very easy to get lost in here. You have the FedEx Copy Center in the back over there too if you have any work to do. But yeah, I can see this uh, being a very difficult place to get around. But let's go ahead and get back to the mall. We're gonna take the escalator down from the mall and we're gonna do a loop around the casino. Oh gosh, wow. Yeah guys, I am exhausted and I'm still walking. 
It is a long way to the end of that hallway there. But that's all right. We still got plenty of time to wander around. So here we are back to the district. We can see a lot more restaurants and different stores. There's Viva down there. That's a popular one with Turn It Up World. I think they went to go try that out, had a blast doing it. More of the conference rooms over here, the orchid room. Since in the flower theme over here. And I thought those were paper cranes, but I guess they're not. I'm actually a little disappointed that they're not, but they're still amazing. This is beautiful artwork. And then if you guys keep heading this way, you're going to run into the Zook Nightclub, the IU Day Club and all that. Haven't had a chance to try any of those out. Maybe we'll try it next time we get a chance to visit. And then there are plenty more shops upstairs, but I think it's a good time to get back downstairs and check out more of the property. Now here's an interesting thing. This isn't quite finished yet. I wonder if this comes up from the loop. You know, I think we should investigate a little bit. Oh, Dr. Refresh. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder what's going to end up being down there. Looks like it's Resorts Worldy. It's got the logo. I'll have to investigate another time. Alright, but now that we're back on the ground floor over here, I think we should get back to the casino. Alright, it's been a since we're back at the casino. We're starting with the Kusinori restaurant over here. We actually had that for dinner. Hopefully I'll have the video up pretty soon. If I do, I'll leave the link to it in the description box below or else put up a card. Otherwise, that's about it. But yeah, let's go ahead and get a, get a move on. Let's go, mate. And then otherwise, we do have the Suns Out, Buns Out cafe on the side over here. Most of the gaming tables are also going to be on this side here. It's actually pretty quiet, so I can film a few of the gaming tables. There were some people on the last ones, didn't want to invade their privacy, but I don't mind taking a look at the breakfast cafes. <laughs> really, lovely people that work everywhere here. But you have that option. If you're looking at a breakfast cafe here, you even got the Eggman here. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, uh, the goofy things I do. That was for Wonder Woman, mostly. All right. And then immediately to our left, we have the kitchen. That is also the location of the Resorts World Buffet. Hopefully I'll have a video of that up pretty soon, too. And if I do, I'll put a link to it in the card above. Now, there are going to be three hotel lobbies that we go to. This one's going to be the Conrad. We're going to come in here first, and then we're going to go to the Crawford and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna check out the Hilton. So let's check out Conrad first. So guys, you'll know that you're at the Conrad because when you walk in, you're immediately greeted by Liberace's piano. I probably mispronounced Liberace, but you know. And then you also do have the hotel elevators on this side, gentlemen's rooms over here. Didn't get a chance to use that on opening night, but you know. And then these will take you up to the guest rooms, one of 35, over 3,500 rooms if you want to stay at Resorts World. We also do have the Resorts World store. Uh, there are several of them on property, one in every single one of the towers, and they're all pretty overpriced, but, you know, that's pretty standard for your hotel stores. But yeah, there we go. The man himself. Now I'm just waiting for, uh, now I'm waiting for the joke. I want to know if anyone's ever going to ask, did the real Liberace stay here? Just waiting for that. And then when we come back into the Conrad Hotel Lobby, you got the Hotel Lobby Bar over here for the hotel guests as well as check-in area. So you're going to have a drink. You can sit down. They have a piano in the back of the play. And then you come in from the valet over here and you can get checked in. 
and it is lovely concierge desk in the back and then if you follow that way you can get back to the conrad but we're not going to take the conrad this time or not the conrad the crockford but we're not going to take that route this time we're going to go back in through the casino but you can get to the crockford through there with your hotel key but yeah we're going to go back to the casino continue our loop Oh, Starlight Lounge is over this way too. We're gonna have to try that out. Probably really expensive drinks, but we'll find out when we get there. All right guys, continuing our tour from the kitchen, we do get to see the vast majority of Resorts World and their casino here. It's a good amount of it. They do have a lot of electronic table games here. So obviously you have the classic roulette, classic table games. There's no shortage of those. And they do have the electronic roulette banks and banks and slot machines and then of course you have the electronic craps the electronic roulette and just everything it is all it's all here whatever you want is all here so if you guys are electronic gaming fans on this side or if you're about the table games on this side don't worry there's plenty for you to do four and a half billion dollars well spent And now leaving the kitchen, we're gonna be heading back out. That's the restaurant as a whole. And then back to a few more table games. These are a little more crowded, but they're popular. And what you might find a little more interesting than just the table games themselves is you might find the high limit area on the right hand side a little more interesting. So here we are, taking a look at the Crockford Lounge. So this is our High Limit Lounge. And this is where you get all the high-end drinks and where you can play all the high-end casino games. Now I don't play much in there, so I'm not too worried about that. I'd rather spend time at this bar. If you get a good walkabout over here, this is their center bar. I'll put the name of it on the screen, but I always remember it by the gold up top. And then you have, of course, video poker here, and plenty of or plenty of places to sit down and recharge yourself. But yeah, it's all pretty intense. It's a great place to chill, great place to stay. But yeah, here is our center bar, and then we can continue down. We'll get back to the other Crockford's Lounge in a second, too. But if you're interested, not only do they have every other slot machine, they have a ginormous bank of Super Buffalo. This is the Buffalo Link. Now, that one kind of kicked my butt over at, um, where did I play that at? I played that at Aria, and it shattered me. But maybe this one's better, because they sure as heck invested a lot into this. And it goes all the way around. But when you get past that, you get back to the Crockford's Lounge over here. Crockford's Lounge right there. And you can also go back to the Hilton. Now the Hilton is where I'm staying this go around. And if you follow this hallway down, you're gonna see some of the VIP areas, VIP desks where the, I think this is where the hosts are working. Nobody's in there right now, but you know. And then you can take elevators up to the spa and fitness center. And more importantly, they have not only the Crockford's Lounge again, you can get in to that area. They have the Genting Palace, the signature restaurant. They are only open for dinner. They're, although the lounge is usually open from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. So if you're looking for a late night drink spot, this is the place for you. It's right across from Nectar Bath Streets where you can get bath bombs, and I'm wondering if this is where they sell that actual little bathtub that they put the champagne in. But yep, this is where you find it. And there is the actual lounge itself, absolutely gorgeous in there. And 
market is off to the left if, in case you're ever thinking about a snack or a little bit of liquor and your mini fridge is closed. And then here we are at the Hilton check-in. So Hilton, you check in over here. It's the main check-in desk. They also have electronic options, but you know, the line was so short, we actually popped in and went to go talk to a representative. Well done, and they even have a nice little model of Resorts World itself. And then on the other side, now this is gonna be the busiest one. This is the most economical of the hotel towers, but they still didn't skimp on any of the design choices. Absolutely lovely. Nice. And then coming back, you're also gonna find the Resorts World store. I found that this is the most involved of the three properties because you do have all of the elevators that take you upstairs. We're staying on the 31st floor this go around. And then bathrooms over here. But yeah, we got upgraded to a higher floor with a better view. So that was a good little spoiler for the $20 technique if you guys are interested. I might put that video up later. And also guys, if you come in through the High Limit Lounge, just a little off over this way to the High Limit Lounge, you can actually walk into the Crockford. So they do also have a bar here. And then, the hotel check-in desk too, so if you guys are going to stay at the Crockfords, this is a good place to do it. Beautiful spot. In fact, I might take a break and have a drink while I'm here. Just... Yeah, just because. I'm going to take a break, have a drink, and then I'll talk to you. We'll check out the other hotels. Love this. The show must go on. That is so true. Anyway though, let's get back to the casino. And coming back from the Hilton, we do have the poker room on this side. In case anyone's ever interested in playing a little bit of poker, you got the higher end poker tables on this end over here. There's our poker room. And then immediately on the other side, I don't think this was open on opening night. We did want to check this out. And this is right across from not only the sports book, but it's also across from the Players Club too. I think this is the Mari Gold, which has an interesting moniker here. That's Mari Gold, Lobster and Burgers. I'm not sure what to make of that, but that is the name of this restaurant here. Also, if you're interested, you can get your rewards card right here. This is the Genting Rewards card because this is the, oh, that's the company that handles the casino. Genting doesn't actually do any of the hotel stuff. That's mostly Hilton and their group there. So if you need to print off a card or get signed up, it starts here. And of course, if you need to redeem any rewards, you have the cashier's cage over here on the left-hand side. Let's just take a second, have a look around. And now that we've done that, we can continue our way down and check out the car collection. guys you gotta have a look at this it's an homage to the old stardust hotel so that's a neat little feature so for those of you who don't know the stardust actually used to be the hotel that was on this property before the boyd family tore it down in hopes of building echelon place now unfortunately echelon place did not go as planned but it was somewhat saved in name only at least in that sign there and we also have a starbucks over here moving on all right, and then we have our Resorts World store here. Again, mostly just kind of local merchandise there. Not local, local, but just uh, on-property merchandise. You can get back from the hotel parking there if you did drive in. 
And then we actually do have the whole car collection that we can walk down here. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. We're gonna do a full loop around. That's Finish and Shorts, don't forget to check out the Patreon so I can afford one of these one of these days. That was a kid. that's a joke, that's a joke, I'm kidding. Okay, so here's the dog house here, and why is the dog house important? Well, not only is it an amazing looking sports bar with its own, with its own roach coach in the middle of it, gourmet roach coach, it also functions as the sports book from what I understand. Now, I haven't had a chance to test this theory. I will have to do a little research on it, but yes, if you are looking to play some sports bets and do a little bit of sports-based eating, this is the place for you. I have to list the hours on the screen too, but I think they're quite doable. All right, we are coming back in. And is this an actual piano? It is an actual piano. Liberace, eat your heart out here. I didn't expect that to be a piano. Since we've done that already, I'm getting a little hungry. I think we should go get a snack. And where better to get a snack than Famous Foods. Street Eats area. So you can come through here if you're done with the casino. And this is, this is the rough equivalent to a food court for Resorts World here. This is where they also keep the vast majority of their 40 eateries. A lot of them are Asian themed here, so if you're not really big on uh, Japanese food or Thai food or Chinese food or anything along those lines, you're probably not going to have a good time at this property. But if you are, you're going to be in heaven. It's basically everything has got a little Asian twist on it, and I think that is good. That is the appropriate, I, I think it's appropriate non-obnoxious theming. We're coming back from Pepita's Kitchen here. And we can even see the Nori bar in the back. Oh, and here's the main beer bar. It kind of reminds me of the ramen place from Blade Runner. Just with the vertical signs and everything. Oh, we got some Texas barbecue over here too. Yeah, there's so many places to eat around here. I think you could probably eat you could probably eat here every day and not get tired of it. Street bird fried chicken. So they've got American things too. And you can even order your famous foods on the side and have them delivered. It's another neat little thing. The mall's got a stage here, the little food court. And oh, you got the big lucky cat over here. And it's a dessert bar. We better keep Wonder Woman away from this, guys. This place is outstanding. And there's Nordi Bar again if you want sushi and sake. That's a good place to be. And then even more alcohol in the center as we've already addressed. Neat little feature about this is that the alcohol 
at least the beers anyway, are self-serve. Oh, it's gotta be one of those. Yeah. Okay, so there's a special card that you, you use it for it. from the bartender. Oh, nice. And then once you put it in, and then it'll tell you your price. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Pour, take it by the ounce. Awesome, good to know, yeah. good to know. All right, I'll try it out a little later. Appreciate you, man. Then there's also the yakitori stick over here. I understand these are $8 Yakitori sticks and they're probably not worth it. So we'll probably move on. Ten Suns on this side too. But yeah, all Asian street food. And I think that is glorious. That is perfect for a property like this. Beautiful. Alright, Famous Foods is over. We're back into the casino. We can finish off with Gatsby's here in the casino. Because you're just going to go to Red Tail otherwise. And there's just so much casino here. All right, but here is my favorite bar in the casino so far. This is Gatsby's, I assume named after the great Gatsby. The showing gets closed right now. All we have to do is uh, walk up the other way and then we'll be in. But this is the one that featured the champagne bubble bath. So if you are interested in getting the secret champagne bubble bath, this is the place to do it. And it might be a nice spot for a cocktail hour. Who knows? Who knows? All right, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's tour and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Once again, I want to thank our Patreon members for helping make today's video possible. Guys, it means the world to me that you continue to support me in this way, and help me stay independent of the almost random whims of the YouTube algorithm. If you're interested in backing Ace of Vegas on the Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. That said, what are your thoughts on Resorts World? Is it a Vegas goer's paradise? Or is it just another over-the-top tourist trap? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Until next time though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you all strong hands, and of course, happy spending you guys. Viva, Ace of Vegas. 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 Viva, Ace of Vegas.